This is Where is the Music podcast, and I'm your host. My name is uh, Alberto El Ferro. I'm a pianist and a composer, and we are about to venture into some deep and interesting musical topic. So prepare your ears and get ready to answer the question, where is the music? Hello and welcome back everyone to Where is the Music podcast. Today I am going to introduce you to a little short masterpiece of uh, the late romantic piano repertoire. We are talking about uh, an intermezzo for piano solo by Johann Seba- uh, by Johann Brahms. <laughs> Johann Sebastian Brahms. That's funny. Uh, by Johannes Brahms. Um, Uh, This is uh, the Opus 118 and uh, uh, this is the second intermezzo of this uh, collection. It's uh, in A major and um, um, it is possible that uh, uh, if you haven't identified it or if you don't recall this, if this name doesn't ring a bell, uh, it is possible that you have heard it before. It's uh, quite uh, well known. Um, although uh, the late music by Johannes Brahms, uh, it's, it might not be the most, uh, uh, let's say, performed. Uh, it's not that uh, it's not that common to find it, uh, particularly because of its uh, uh, expressive and artistic, I would say, aesthetic uh, profundity. Um, certainly, this particular one among uh, the the many collection he. Uh, he wrote, uh, uh, I think, uh, five collections of uh, piano pieces as uh, late uh, works of his life, uh, Opus 116, 117, 118, uh, 119. Um, and so um, these are uh, particularly uh, profound uh, because, first of all, the composer go back, uh, goes back to piano solo repertoire after having uh, mastered fundamentally every possible um, classical form from the orchestra to the chamber ensemble uh, to the string quartet um, um, and um, the piano solo is of course a more intimate dimension but he has uh, developed uh, his craft uh, to such a degree on all uh, the dimension of uh, musical composition. Um, I would uh, like today though uh, to uh, maybe not go through um, a typical linear manner. If you have been following uh, the Where is the Music podcast, you know that I tend to generally go on a, um, uh, on many tangents perhaps, but also I tend to not follow, let's say, the neither biographical or the historical or the uh, analytical uh, trajectory. I, uh, and this is also pro- probably, probably a good opportunity to um, refresh uh, um, my listeners to what is the uh, overall uh, purpose of this uh, podcast, which is uh, to talk uh, about music. Um, but mm, what maybe uh, distinguish, distinguishes this podcast to from, from other uh, similar ones is that um, I uh, don't intend uh, to talk about anything else other than what uh, music uh, really means. Having said that, uh, the acknowledgement of the impossibility of the task is, uh, is there. I am perfectly aware that uh, we cannot talk about music. After all, uh, what is there to say? You, um, uh, wh- wh- wherever it is that music is meant to convey to us, uh, we are going to um, appreciate it, understand it and enjoy it. Uh, by listening, not by explanations of what or descriptions of what we're listening to. Uh, but having said that, there are plenty of things that perhaps uh, um, uh, we can say about it. Maybe there are words uh, or um, poetic terms or maybe even aesthetic approaches or uh, 
perspectives and angles that might uh, enlighten us or might just help us uh, uh, getting closer to the musical experience and um, uh, last note on this uh, this fundamentally comes from my personal experience as a student and, and uh, an artist and a, a teacher um, and the, my experience is the one who of someone who has uh, been around uh, music and words and have um, greatly benefited from uh, the words of uh, um, experts or maybe the words of artists the, mo the words of uh, uh, people who sometimes uh, are able to to catch in a phrase in a uh, in a way of saying in an image perhaps uh, something that is uh, um, inextricably linked to uh, to a piece of music or maybe even just a passage um, so having said that having a knowledge that we cannot really talk about music let's uh, let's talk a little bit about this so as usual i um, i will try to play through the piece or at least to play passages um, but uh, in this case um, i would like to perhaps uh, introduce you to a variety of layers of which uh, this piece is composed and uh, if uh, the experiment goes well uh, when in the end i will play the whole thing together you might appreciate it as uh, as uh, what it is which is a uh, very fluent, very delicate, elegant, uh, somehow even uh, uh, light while profound, but nevertheless it is a truly remarkable and dense um, uh, piece of uh, musical architecture and I, w and I will um, I mean I, I would think that the mission is accomplished if uh, I was able to, if I were able to communicate and convey to you a little bit of this uh, architecture so the first layer is certainly uh, harmony and uh, uh, this is not a, a class I'm not gonna teach you about chords but what I'm gonna do is uh, we're gonna hear harmony uh, particularly uh, we're gonna hear the choice of uh, harmonies that uh, uh, that Brahms has uh, organized uh, together with uh, a second dimension, the, the meter or rhythm. So this is the first uh, phrase. Okay, there is nothing special. Uh, this is not Brahms. This is my version of the harmony uh, that Brahms writes. I took off the melody, uh, so if you know this piece, you perhaps haven't uh, recognized it yet. I'm gonna play it again and say a couple of things about it. It's a uh, it's a th uh, ternary meter, what we call, uh, it's in 3-4, meaning there are uh, three bits per bar. Um, we feel the, uh, the waltzy type of uh, movement. And one, two, and one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, etc. Um, but the interesting aspect of it is not the chord per se or uh, or the, the the order or the musical phrase per se uh, the uh, the harmony the beauty that i personally find in this harmony is that uh, it kind of defies a bit especially in the beginning the the uh, let's say the gravities or uh, the, the the poles of tensions uh, that we expect first of all uh, it starts uh, uh, off uh, it doesn't uh, doesn't start uh, really on it should start uh, right that sounds okay but it does the opposite what's the difference why why 
why am I saying this? Because um, in general, in music, every every time we feel uh, the landing somewhere, and in this case, we're talking about the landing on the first beat of a bar. Uh, we talk about a cadence, which, uh, by the way, if you know if you don't know the term, cadence comes from the Italian cadenza cadere, which means to fall. And so the idea of uh, gravity landing, falling on a particular uh, moment of the bar is um, either enhanced or uh, deceived uh, from by harmony. In this case, in this case, it is not perfectly linear. While in this one, you can hear it is. I'll play it again. Right? This leaves things open. It's not completely fell. It hasn't completely fallen. While here, it has. So the choice of a composer to do the other way rather than the uh, intuitive one, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. He does it twice. As you can see, the response that, that concludes the phrase gives, uh, it's more regular, gives more of a, a classical closure, as, as, we, as we call it. Okay, let's look at the second phrase and see if we find something similar. similar I would uh, I would point out that uh, uh, there is more tension coming through the first cadence is uh, certainly clearer and more solid this one mm, again I'm gonna play the harmony of the first uh, uh, two phrases all together and you already start probably I, I would hope having um, uh, let's say a polyphonic introduction and harmonic introduction in this piece there is more to it and I hope I'm gonna get uh, to go through it all but uh, what I really would like you to uh, is forget about the notes and start hearing the harmony the inner the developing transforming tension that uh, uh, tells a story uh, within these changes of chords. sounds like we have arrived home doesn't it by home if you're a musician you probably know already what I mean what I intend the technical term for the harmonic chord that um, uh, tells we are a home is uh, tonic it sounds like we have arrived at a tonic doesn't it but that's not where we started we started here remember and we arrived here it's, it is quite tricky if you if you have never uh, let's say played an instrument played the piano it's quite tricky to label this sound they are so similar but at the same time uh, the music is telling us whether it whether we are at uh, at the home sound or not and we feel it in both cases we feel it here in the very beginning and we feel it here at the very end so which one is it well this is a, a trick pretty common in music um, uh, we start uh, in uh, in a home that we call tonic and uh, 
we land in another home that we call dominant and the relationship between the two especially if uh, if you uh, if you are able to uh, distinguish them um, the relationship between the two is of course they are uh, a fifth apart if you uh, if you're curious about uh, what does what this means perhaps you could um, go back to one of my previous episodes where I uh, let's say where I discuss the magic of uh, fifths in music and what is a fifth and why is it so important so um, we are back uh, uh, we are back to home as, as I was saying what does uh, Brahms do continues starts again there are little variations here you can tell it's a very similar kind of phrase as as we heard before these little variations don't change much of the general uh, trajectory let's continue overall it's uh, the same now um, now that you have a, uh, a general impression a general sense of what this music is about what would you say would you say it's um, a, it is a dance or perhaps it is a it is a song with a maybe very lyrical singable melody um, there is probably a bit of both um, there are no words but still perhaps we can sing something on top uh, Brahms writes a, a very lyrical melody and um, I'm gonna s play it for you and then we're gonna put it all together nice isn't it um, let's put it all together and and say a couple of things after gorgeous isn't it uh, notice how uh, even though it's very lyrical there are jumps like this this is quite difficult to sing but uh, at the same time it's extremely expressive it's very pathetic uh, it uh, it is probably a, a development of this that becomes right now uh, this melody here has a pe peculiarity I'd say um, it is based on uh, a three notes motive this is the motive that uh, repeats in three notes I mean the notes are different but the fact that they are free uh, stays it stays uh, the same now continues there is a nice uh, circular trajectory going up and down very very lyrical there is nothing particularly original no uh, no unique but notice how this uh, response can still relate to the number three uh, we have three notes going up three notes going down so it doesn't seem to me that Brahms is treating this uh, melodic motive for its uh, uh, trajectory his, uh, if 
it's going down or up but it seems to be that it's treating one other aspect of it it's uh, brevity the fact is just uh, three notes and these three notes uh, becomes material to to be played to be stretched so in this case there are two quick and one long again and now all is even okay he does it again three one two three and again one two three one two three okay we'll we'll come back uh, a little bit later on this uh, uh, three notes uh, theory obviously this is just a, uh, at this stage is probably just um, uh, an idea it might be that has some some relevance later and certainly we will uh, maintain open the question for now why free notes and why would the uh, free notes matter um, now we continue a little bit talking about uh, harmony in relationship with uh, with rhythm because uh, at this stage after the whole section the first section has been exposed we have an interesting very mysterious uh, phrase music I play it to you So what's mysterious about it? Well, uh, you might have heard, uh, you might have heard a certain uh, pace to it. There is uh, the pace some, somehow increases while the harmony slows down. As a matter of fact, this this is just one chord. This is another. another and finally somehow there is a, a interesting strategy here the pace of the music increases but the the number of uh, actual harmonies decreases uh, it's, it's probably a good way to keep things in balance um, but let's notice that we were we finished the first section here we start this new one here how a little change dramatically expands uh, probably in a in a darker tone expands towards um, toward the low range um, the yeah the dramatic impact there is a, there is something that uh, becomes a, a bit dark very dense harmonies here but you can tell there is um, the setting for a crescendo for a, uh, we, we are bi start building up energy and tension for something that is about to come let's hear it again first uh, arrival point but you notice that uh, uh, all the tension that we have created particularly through quite uh, dissonant chords the, the sense of dissonance here uh, what I mean by dissonance exactly I mean the ear can perceive when certain sounds 
do not belong and uh, uh, a bit uh, by intuition a bit a bit with by experience we tend to categorize the sounds um, according to how close or how far away they are to uh, an actual idea of uh, of balance and harmony look at listen to this sound this sound is I would say reasonably consonant but there is something off off and odd about it this this very low note this is a very normal sound it's a nice C major chord but with this it's very very dark and what about this it's very similar yet uh, the tension is dramatically increased and even more right here so we have Brahms is uh, the master of this uh, dance orchestration where uh, little changes can uh, can uh, can do a lot for what we call the musical tension um, and then we have the melodic note right it's a uh, it just moves uh, up and down is very close it's called stepwise motion uh, it no, it's not great tension but that note this one it creates a lot of dissonance right. it's fundamentally <laughs> wrong But in the context, it um, it just uh, um, just makes us feel that we are adding attention and taking it back, adding attention and taking it back. It's a sim it's a simple in a sense. It's a little step uh, that um, the composer here adds to to a larger trajectory of uh, of tension. This larger trajectory, of course, is. A uh, musical phrase, a musical phrase that lasts, I'd say, from here lasts for a good uh, 12 bars. Um, um, notice before I play it the three notes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? Again. This final chord, I think, is uh, I think it's <laughs> it's perfect. There is an explosion of dissonance here. Wow! This this is very hard to sing, and it's not lyrical at all. But that's uh, it's, it's just another step for drama and and, and tension. slowly returns to a sense s uh, equilibrium but only to leave it and we're building up again and again and maybe we arrived it seems that we are arrived are we the sense of opening and uh, and climax says seems seems to be uh, seems to be here, but we are yet to finish. What a beautiful a beautiful parenthesis we have once again our three notes now elaborated a bit but still how dark and uh, let's say uh, it seems it seems like uh, if there was a, 
a positive energy moving upwards and building uh, towards a, a particular let's say expressive goal now it seems that this uh, this energy has given up is falling if there is if there is um, such a thing as decadent music I will say this is this phrase is uh, decadent things seems to be tragically falling into despair um, by the way uh, if uh, if you think that uh, the distinction between a major chord and its minor version is not uh, something too serious it's too simple to to use nowadays uh, notice how he how Brahms does it and now minor right simple but uh, extremely expressive and finally the last thing I want you to notice about this phrase is the free note that started the piece you remember this one you remember now we find them here just pure magic so here we are at the bottom and perhaps uh, we are about uh, to transcend it like we are transcending it and uh, now we are we are going to the close of this uh, initial let's say first of a free section um, the closing the the final phrase has uh, something that we have encountered we have um, this note actually this this melody you remember we encountered it earlier encountered it it was this passage here mm. so there is a, a game of uh, um, a game of references here that keeps uh, uh, the the music uh, together and coherent um, it it I like this quote they keep the music uh, keeps changing while being always itself I don't know what I what I heard it but um, I like it and um, this uh, coda starts uh, um, on these three notes again so we have uh, the, f the ending uh, okay any of the phrase and then codas The feel obviously is entirely different from what we heard earlier. Should we refresh it and so you can compare clearly? This happened earlier. tension and the uh, and the expectation and desire to, uh, to 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 go through certain uh, I don't know worldly uh, sorrows uh, to transcend them to go to achieve uh, uh, perhaps a you know um, a, a lighter and more uh, you know pleasant uh, dimension and here it is. motive you hear it 
we started mm. okay um, I'm gonna take a quick uh, very short break just to remind you um, that my musical courses my piano courses are available online the last one that I added is uh, a piano course on the music of Chopin uh, designed for uh, beginner and intermediate uh, piano players uh, this is roughly four hours of lesson on uh, a few of uh, Chopin's most uh, beloved pieces of music and uh, I highly recommend uh, these courses uh, to all students who um, are interested in developing their um, technical uh, piano skills but also their expressive uh, skills, expressive abilities. As a matter of fact, it's very common to uh, find uh, material online that uh, helps uh, the uh, interpretation of Chopin but usually the repertoire is quite uh, advanced and uh, in many years of teaching I, I realized, I noticed that uh, uh, there are so many people passionate about the music of Chopin but uh, are uh, at the same time uh, perhaps uh, um, at a level that uh, doesn't allow them to tackle the most uh, difficult repertoire so uh, I play and teach uh, some of the most approachable repertoire I'm sure you'll find some of your favorite pieces as well so uh, go ahead, the link is in the description and um, uh, it's called the Piano Music of Chopin it's available on Udemy and uh, until the 10th of August there is a 30% discount uh, if you um, put uh, the coupon code that you find in the description so um, that's it, end of, the end of the advertisement let's go on with um, the central section of the this beautiful intermezzo uh, it is uh, it is quite a change of pace uh, a complete change of texture uh, but you'll see how um, somehow it relates perfectly the is one of these situations where the contrast between uh, two sections uh, is uh, uh, exactly what keeps things coherent and, and in balance Let's hear it uh, a little bit. <laughs> say a couple of things here before uh, before we go on um, the texture as I was saying has, uh, has changed it floats a little bit more this is because now we are not on uh, uh, normal uh, quavers but we are on triplets you can hear the, the pace has, uh, has changed um, but also uh, this uh, vibration, this, 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 this tension throughout uh, this uh, phrase is given by the, um, the polyrhythm creates, created by the right hand part and the left hand part uh, particularly uh, you can hear it here here things let's say things are floating together they are not uh, exactly um, regular and matching so um, this this texture is uh, quite uh, uh, quite remarkably different from where we come from we come from a lyrical soft uh, song fundamentally something that can be sung and, and does go quite regularly in a consistent uh, meter and consistent tempo everything in this section though starts seem, seems to, to, to fall apart seems to enter a, a dimension of uh, e e ephemerality of, uh, of pure vibration 
uh, nevertheless there is um, uh, there is melody beautiful melody notice that there is a counter melody so how does this work couldn't be a finer composer than Brahms putting together this uh, this melody so sounds like a little bit of an imitation uh, in the beginning right mm. right so together goes After that we have another level up towards, I would say, pure transcendence. back beautiful is this moment i i wanted to continue but there is uh, uh, there is so much to say um notice after this uh, moment of pure uh, ascension oh pardon me although the melody is uh, going down it it is a moment of pure lightness and contemplation it is quite difficult to uh, play these chords in a manner that uh, you hear the melody and the counterpoint clearly uh, along with all these uh, other notes very dense chords it is possible that in the mind of Brahms this is all orchestra clarinets flutes strings bassoon and at the piano we just have to use a lot of imagination and uh, a bit of creativity to make it uh, work but when this part ends we are coming back to this uh, uh, very flowing free-flowing and I would say dramatic um, um, river type <laughs> of uh, texture now 
you probably have recognized it, that the melody they earlier played now it's in the tenor right and um, uh, the melody that earlier was uh, in the tenor now is in the soprano this is a bit of a uh, mind twist and hands twist because uh, yeah, there seem to be three clear parts clearly divided and uh, guess what pianists only have two hands good luck with that After this brief but short explosion, b uh, b brief but intense explosion of uh, of harmony of pathetism, uh, here we have uh, a few codas that might hint that we are going we are going uh, back to s to somewhere more stable. And now, oh, I know this. But wait a minute, something has changed. Change a little switch of notes like this. That's a, that's a first, uh, the first time that we hear it. Uh, but as I was saying, a little switch of notes adds uh, so much uh, more pathos. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
isn't that gorgeous so it doesn't seem uh, doesn't seem to me that uh, this requires much to say to be perfectly uh, honest with you I just want to point out that uh, after the central central section where things become more unstable and uh, vi vibrating uh, this uh, reprise this recapitulation uh, it's uh, it's fundamentally almost exactly copying and paste uh, the opening page but notice how uh, we didn't feel at all the the repetition the weight of the repetition why because the choice of material the elaboration the delicate balance between uh, uh, between the phrases and the contrast between the sections is so well calculated that uh, even a page almost a page and a half exactly repeated note by note um, doesn't feel at all repeated feels like new um, the uh, precision the accuracy the sensitivity to get the things so just exactly right so that even if you <laughs> even if you repeat them uh, it doesn't feel like a repetition at all that's uh, uh, that's the stuff of genius some students uh, when they first encounter this uh, these examples tend to dismiss uh, these qualities as a uh, a property of maybe the style an aspect of the style of a particular uh, period of music so uh, if the form is a b a every composer will write using that form and of course every piece will have uh, the final section uh, fundamentally repeated from the first but uh, uh, that uh, is quite a superficial uh, way to approach the uh, the, the structure of a piece because if you think about the way a wee interesting story works you cannot take the first chapter and put it in the end right it, it won't work but there is something about uh, starting from home and reaching home that nevertheless has a very profound meaning and music tends to take advantage of this uh, journey and certainly the form ABA does that uh, nevertheless the ability to um, play uh, such a such a journey uh, with uh, uh, this sort of millimetric and uh, mm, let's say uh, surgical precision as a composer like Brahms does it's quite uh, remarkable and uh, and unique so if you play the piano and uh, you didn't know this piece I encourage you to to get uh, your hands on it uh, to uh, read it and to learn it uh, it's uh, just beautiful beautiful harmonies and um, well if you if you don't uh, play the piano I encourage you to listen to some uh, nice versions and actually I encourage you to listen to the whole uh, opus uh, 118 which is where this intermezzo is taken from I will uh, put a link on uh, on the podcast episode i'm going to uh, hopefully add some more to the list of uh, brahms uh, piano piece p pieces uh, later on in the future so stay tuned and uh, thank you very much for listening today i will uh, see you uh, the next time bye bye my music courses are ready and available on udemy.com the latest is a piano course on Chopin in which I will be working in depth on some of his most approachable and beloved repertoire, a course designed for beginner and intermediate piano players. I started playing Chopin around 30 years ago and I love when students want to learn his music. This is what motivated me to create it, making sure that while discovering Chopin's characteristic style and technique, the course will be approachable for all piano players. In this course I will teach you the key aspects of Chopin's approach, the fundamentals of his style and will help you get through the challenges of Chopin's most well-known pieces. On top of it I offer a 30% discount with the code WHERE IS THE MUSIC 
The offer is active on udemy.com until the 10th of August 2024. The link is in the description. And if you go there, make sure you check my other course on Counterpoint. Looking forward to see you on Udemy. Thanks for listening to Where is the Music podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, look up for others. I made a few. I publish an episode every week roughly, investigating each time a different aspect of music. The music making, the music listening, the meaning of music and its relevance in our lives. It is very helpful for me if you like, subscribe, follow on your favorite platform. Where is the Music is on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, TuneIn and Google Podcasts. If you like to support me, you are free to do so through Patreon, link in description. Thank you again, until next time.